Today, we are gonna remove a piece of our garbage plank. We're trying to gain access to our frame ends where they socket into the keel uh, so we can see how many of our frames need replacing. Most of the bilge that we can see is full of cement. Somebody's had trouble getting the fastenings to hold as evidenced by the carriage bolts that we're finding in here. And they go right through and then through the frames. There's a bit of an unusual situation here. We can see a piece of ready rod here and it goes right over to the other side. And I can see this in a few places. So I think somebody at some point has tried to make these planks stay on. And I think the stem is probably not holding fastening. So they put a piece of ready rod through the plank, through the stem, out the other side with a nut and a washer on both sides. So can't get at the nuts on the inside without chiseling out the cement. In an ideal world, we would chisel out the cement after the plank is gone. Because this end of the plank, our garboard is a bit mangled, it's old, and I think when it comes time to put a plank back in here, we probably won't want at least this end in. I'm gonna make a saw cut about here, and then I'm gonna get out the pry bar, and I'm just gonna start levering in. <clears throat> I'm probably gonna end up sort of damaging the edge of this rabbit a bit, but as you can see, it's already in a bit of a rough shape. There's not much left. A little bit of thread at the end. Shanks intact. Somebody's uh, refastened it at some point, sporadically. And there's not much left of that one. Let's pull that one out and see what it looks like. Well, that one looks better. I'm not sure why the one was so badly deteriorated, but that one's okay. We are uh, just trying to come up with a method to be able to pull these floors up. They've been put down without uh, removable sections to inspect the bilge area and the keel. We need to get at them to be able to help the garboard and broad stake removal and then all the concrete and stuff and everything in the bilge filled with all kinds of milled uh, metal offcuts. So we're going to make a plunge cut down the center line here and then um, six or seven uh, four boards out, we're gonna do another plunge cut and we're gonna try to remove sort of two sections and then be able to bring them up and give us access to either side of the keelson so we can um, help facilitate that garber removal and get all that material out of there. Thank you. 
<laughs> I am chiseling the cement ballast out of this bilge. It's probably one of the most confined spaces on the vessel. It's really fun in here. Sweet. Yeah, so this is what we're doing. We've got uh, old ingots. Just chiseled one of those out. And we've got uh, chunks of railroad tie plates. And I don't know what this is. It appears to be solid steel rod about seven inches in diameter. This is our stem here where it starts to meet the keel. Um, and where the frames and the planks meet the stem or the keel, they've filled the lower part just with tar. And then on top of the tar, they've poured a layer of cement. And in the cement, they've just filled it with whatever chunks of heavy steel they could find. A lot of it's ingots, a lot of it's just weird stuff. It does make the chiseling of the cement a bit harder because because then you keep running into pieces of metal and it doesn't chisel as well as cement. And you can see in here the ends of the carriage bolts that somebody fastened the planks on with. But of course the nuts don't just turn off, the whole bolt spins, so then you gotta try to cut the nut off, <laughs> hammer the bolt out, and uh, it's a bit of a challenge working in here. Looks like fun, huh? Right? Good times. Today we are removing the broad straight, which is the next one up. Yesterday we removed the forward half of the garboard. It exposes this much more cement, which will be able to chisel out some of it from the outside. But more importantly, we'll be able to get inside with the proper jackhammer and all the cement will fall out the bottom. But this is nice. I don't know what's going on in here, but what that is, it's just... I thought our viewers might appreciate what we're going through to restore this lovely old vessel. It's not every day you get to see something that looks that disgusting. Right? Don't ask yourself what's actually in there either. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Just pure rust maybe? I don't know. We'll have to do a chemical analysis. Yeah, you know, I want to just start pulling on it, but if it does come off, 
it's gonna sort of fall down to the ground in an uncontrolled fashion, so. Now we're removing the shear plank, or what remains of the shear plank. Our main objective being we want to find, see what the ends of our frame heads look like. And from first inspection here, it doesn't, uh, doesn't bode well for the rest of the frame. It probably continues down most of the way. We're going to at some point end up removing probably a couple of these planks as well. Also just to see if like maybe the frame gets better down here. Probably not. Top section of the shear plank. That's the only good bit in there, but yeah, our objective is expose the frame so we can figure out how many we need. One of the banes of wooden boats is rot. There's actually three kinds of rot, brown rot, white rot, and what's called wet rot. So most of the rot in wooden boats is what's called brown rot, which is a fungus. It spreads by spores, which land on wood as long as the humidity and temperature is correct. They can start to spread, and they spread through this mycelium network. You can see it, you know, quite easily here. There, sometimes it's right on the surface of the wood. This mushroom body, which is just really the fruiting body, that's not the actual real fungus. This is the real fungus that grows in this network through the wood. It's a transport network. It carries water. It carries nutrients back and forth, for, you know, to where they're needed. And it's also signaling. And it actually turns out to be intelligent. And it sends signaling, not chemical signaling, but electrical signaling through this network to tell the rest of the network what's needed and where. Given the right conditions, this, this network can form a, what's called a fruiting body, which is what you would normally see. You see in the forest, you see a, like a mushroom head spouting up. Well, this is just the surface of, the, of this vast network getting ready to reproduce. There's two different types. One of them consumes the cellulose, which is the, around the individual cells in the wood. But there are also ones that, that consume the lignum inside. Kind of think of a, of a wood cell, like a, think of it like a jelly bean. So the surface of the, of the cell is like the shell of the jelly bean. It's hard and it resists compression because it's filled inside with this liquid so that it can't be compressed and give it some kind of structure. Uh, but once the cellulose is gone, or even if it gets slightly torn, then its structure is gone. Dry rot, what we call dry rot in wood, that's what it does. It consumes the, the cellulose, so that's all that's left is this gooey stuff. This is what's left, the lignum, and it has no, it has no uh, structure itself. There's different kinds. This, this cubic shows how the, the, the wood develops, you know, with these different rings and these barriers between the surface and you know once the cellulose is gone then the entire structure is gone. There you can see the the mycelium network inside the wood and how it you know exposes the grain it grows just it's you know it's completely gone. Now how to avoid rot. There's a number of ways first of all use dry wood when you build the boat. Number two ventilate 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 as long as you can keep the relative humidity below 75 percent even then there's very, uh, it's very unlikely that the humidity content of the wood will get high enough for the spores to, to take hold in the wood. The second way, second way is uh, treatment with chemicals of some kind. There are lots of different things have been tried. Even salt water work. Borax, uh, which is uh, you know, a simple chemical, uh, spread it around, it will definitely slow the spread of the, of the rot. There's modern treatments, copper-based very often, but these are, first of all, they're poisons. There's no question about it. 
Uh, and so you're putting them in your environment if you're using the boat. Plus, as they leach away, you're putting them in the natural environment. So none of this is good. A couple of other ways uh, that are commonly used, raising the temperature above 100, about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that's gonna kill everything, the mycelium and all the, but it's got to, obviously the heat's gotta penetrate right into the wood. Another method, which is used often in spaces which are musty, uh, is an ozone generator. So you generate ozone in the space, kills whatever spores and mycelium are on the surface of the wood. It's clear dry rot can be a devastating problem in a wooden boat. And it's a problem that we see every day in the reconstruction of North Star. Thing's still accurate. That's a cannonball! It's iron? Yeah. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> Piece of garbage you got there. Oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Almost burnt right through. Wonder how many fires they had on here. Oh, wow. Guess we'll have to do something about that. It appears as though the uh, stove got hot and it was sitting directly on the keelson. So it looks like it's burned its way down about uh, three, four inches into our would appear otherwise to be reasonably sound keelson. Um, assuming the rest of our keelson is sound, then we'll have to probably put a graving piece in here, or we'll at least have to cut away the damaged area and see how bad it is. Probably this on its own won't justify a new keelson. You can see this little rusted thing, which that used to be the water boiler. Oh so, yeah, you put the fire on top, and then you have your water boiler, and it circulates the hot water for the forward end. Well, they had it all jury rigged with a grate and a plate on the bottom and it's obviously it's just fallen down. Right. Probably not a commercially available item anymore so no, I'd say not. if we want to reinstall it as was we're probably looking at making a new one. Char ends about there. Yeah, it's all charred there. plank and the one below it. Uh, looks like there's a considerable section of the bow that needs to be replaced. Basically a line from the forefoot to the chain plates. 
looks largely largely gone so far it's uh, pretty much what we expected which is not good the ceiling is also uh, parts okay the ceiling's pretty shot in a bunch of places as well Morgan and I are gonna meet in the middle here like Lady and the Tramp and then uh, we're gonna move around to the port side and do the same thing pull the guard off pull the shear off get the rest of the bulwarks off. So you shouldn't be able to do that. That's not what wood's supposed to do. <laughs> you get that piece of frame falling out? I think we're gonna replace that one. From what I, I haven't found any problems with the Kielsen yet. Some conversations to be had. Because I'm a bit blunt. Be first. <laughs> 